The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. on Tuesday morning, 60 minutes to go until that opening bell. And we had quite an overnight session going on, folks. We'll zoom in on the S&Ps to start things off. And why not? Positive territory to kick things off yet again in the markets. Right now, we're looking at an S&Ps positive by 32 points, trading at 31.43. You've got the NASDAQ positive by 70, 10,195 on the NQs, making new all-time highs on the NQs on the open potentially. The Dow up 300 points, 26,253. We've got some action in oil to the upside. Oil up 62 cents at 41.35. Gold contract continuing the strength up $7 at 17.73. Gold making it to 17.79 yesterday. Silver up 10 pennies at 18. Notes and bonds, we're getting a little bit of lower price and higher yield. The 10 year negative four ticks at 138.18. The 30 year negative 22 ticks at 176.15. And we'll start things off and take a look at the VIX before we get into the markets. The VIX this morning, market charging higher. The VIX under 30. 29.87 on that VIX. Looks like no volatility premium in this market, folks. Pay attention. We got some volatility. We'll start it off with the S&Ps. So the story of the evening was Mr. Peter Navarro, who better choose his words a little bit more wisely for somebody that is supposed to be the chief negotiator for our country. Not really an intelligent comp com uh, comment, I should say. We'll get over to the headline, and uh, we're going to jump over a few stories this morning. But here's the one President Trump having to come out last night and say the China deal was, quote unquote, fully intact after Navarro Royals Markets. You had Navarro out there responding to a question on Fox News of all venues to do this, of course. His quote, when asked, here's the quote, you know, and this is from, I believe it's Martha McCallum, McCallum, you know, when do you think that the president sort of, I mean, he obviously really wanted to hang on to this trade deal as much as possible and he wanted to. He wanted them to make good on the promises because there had been progress made on that trade deal. But given everything that's happened and all the things you just listed, is that over? It's over, yes, period. Well, guess what, folks? When you're the chief negotiator for the country and you say something like that, the market pays attention. Words matter. 3120 down in a heartbeat, 60 points, 2% in the matter of a half hour. President comes out. A little bit of crisis control for the people that he's put in charge, not handling things well. The market says, oh, oh, sorry, he misspoke. We're back to 3120. And this morning we say, ah, guess what? You know what? We're not even back to 3120. We're going to open 25 points higher in the S&Ps. 3144, as you see it, basically making session highs as we speak in those S&Ps, right? Jumping over to different stories we have as well. And all the headlines are going to be talking about Peter Navarro and Trump clarifying that comment in the big ones. Stocks making the biggest moves out there today. I'm going to jump around a bit. But Starbucks in a story pretty interesting. They're going to be debuting the Impossible Breakfast Sandwich, whether it's Impossible, whether it's Beyond Meat, right? Two of the biggest plant-based uh, meats out there in stores today, along with two new cold coffee beverages that can impact shares of Impossible Foods competitor Beyond, although Starbucks also carries some of Beyond's offering. So now you got Starbucks carrying both of them. They both made it in there. Good for impossible for getting in there. Uh, there you see the sell-off on that news. From 162 down to 156, we're back at 158. Beyond Meat, it's been quite a run for them. Jumping around a bit for Beyond. I mean, look at this volatility, right? Back in February, we're at 130. You trade down to under 50 on the March lows with the market. And just like that, we've more than tripled to about 160 right now in Beyond. Things got a little euphoric up to 240 before we came down to 50, folks. So be careful in this market. You're going to face some volatility for the time being, for sure. Salesforce, they're going to be announced a collaboration with Siemens on a workplace safety software suite. CRM, talk about a strong company overall in the long run. There's your daily, folks. From 195 to 115, we're going to open back up at about 193. Positive with the market this morning on Salesforce. 
American Airlines, we talked about it yesterday. They were uh, coming out with a convertible, a secondary. Well, they're already increasing that to take in even more cash. Some of the airlines particularly hit hard. I mean, just since Friday, we were at 17. We're now at 13.57. You talk about some volatility in these airlines, folks. I mean, that peak, what happened there? June 5th, was everything like over? You had American Airlines up to 28.280. We're going to open under 14 today. Be careful trying to catch that falling knife as things somehow from June 3rd to June 5th, 8th, 5th, June 3rd to June 5th seem to to say that things might be over. But guess what, folks? That is not the case on these airlines. There's American for you trading lower this morning, down about a buck 40. Let's just jump around to some of the other airlines before we finish up. Delta Airlines, I mean, these stocks just pummeled again. Even if you just go from two weeks ago, 37, we're going to open this morning at 29 on Delta. We talked about American Southwest. We saw the spike to about 44, 43. Yeah, the high there, 42.35. We're going to open this morning at about 35 on Southwest. Even JetBlue shares, some of the domestic airlines down to 6, up to almost 15, down this morning to about 11. Jumping around to some of the tech stocks. So it was a big day for Apple yesterday with their Worldwide Developers Conference. This one taking place online. Why not, folks? It has been quite a 24 hours for Apple. Check out the acceleration. We closed yesterday at 358. We're trading today already at 364. You were almost at 350 yesterday. You were at 345 on Friday. You've added $20 in the price of Apple per share just since where we were on Friday. Folks, it's 8.30 a.m. on Tuesday. They got a long way to go in the week, and they are just plowing ahead all-time highs for Apple. Microsoft joined the party as well. Why not? Above 200 for the first time in the close yesterday, 200.57. Already, we're up almost more than a $2 from that level with Microsoft shares. Checking in on Amazon. Amazon up at 27.39. Was that an all-time high? That may have been. It's right up there. I think it was. 27.22. And we got up to overnight, yeah, overnight. We're gonna open 27.33. Amazon looks to open at an all-time high. Quite the run, jumping over to Tesla. Tesla shares trading this morning. Come on, cooperate, where's my bid ask? 9.99 is where we're gonna open it about Tesla. Already, I see them talking about Nikola, the first name of Nikola Tesla, Nikola, uh, this morning, hanging at about 70, the initial spike on in that company up to about 94 from the doldrums of only 14 a time before, quite the acceleration there. Some of the other tech stocks, Netflix shares, Netflix benefited so well, just charging higher, it just don't stop. From 258, just last September, the low of the COVID low, we'll call it, 290. We're going to open this morning at about 467 on Netflix. Some of the social media, Facebook shares charging higher as well. We're going to open at 240, climbing near that 241. And Twitter shares, we'll finish it off with Twitter, not quite the same as Facebook. They got some woes. The low of 20 up to almost 37. We're going to open at about 33.85 for Twitter. Taking a look at oil, quite a volatile session for oil look at that charge higher talk about an uptrend folks tomorrow we get the eia numbers overnight you saw crude just with the markets i mean check out that drop in crude you dropped a dollar in the span of 30 minutes keep your eyes on this trade story folks it is going to continue developing but right now crude at 41.24 stay tuned folks we come back after the break see what else we have on tap for tuesday trading other equities moving headlines out there stay tuned we'll be right back Many in three minutes listeners have heard about the tiger's den the tiger's den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet exchange ideas and information in a comfortable moderated atmosphere hear all of the tfnn shows plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts you can test drive the tiger's den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you details on the tiger's den are on the front page of tfnn.com tfnn has launched our brand new website you can still visit us at the same tfnn.com url but when you do you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation whether you're watching tiger tv live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions we even have new pricing in six months and yearly options check out the new tfnn.com now and experience all the upgrades tfnn.com educating investors 
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps positive by 32, the Dow positive by 307, NASDAQ positive by 71. Uh, I got a three-year weekly on here. Even if you put a daily on the S&Ps, folks, we are right up near the upper echelon, the all-time highs in the futures, 33.97. We're approaching 31.43 this morning, the highs that we had early in June, 32.31. Keeping in mind, when we saw that high, folks, we traded from 32.31 down to 29.23. You're talking about, what is that, 32, that's 231. Yeah, almost 300 S&P points we lost in a heartbeat. We may see some volatility. I mean, this is quite an uptrend that we have. You could call it a consolidation, really, since we've been in that level up above 3,000 since about May 26 now. It is June 23rd. We'll see where that falls. The NQ is looking open at all-time highs. There you go. Today, the futures, 10,200 for the first time. The all-time highs before we were dealing with COVID, 9,700. The highs that we just eclipsed from early June, 10,155. Jumping into some of the equities. Moving that, you got Boeing shares, 188. I mean, look at what the Dow's done, even with Boeing, facing some serious, serious problems, right? Boeing trades all the way down to 89. We're still sitting in 188. You started at 350 pre-COVID, um, and the Dow been one of the biggest laggards. Boeing, definitely a reason. But man, the Dow, you're talking about 3,000 points away from all-time highs, and we're about 8,000 points off of the lows of 18,086. Jumping around to some of the equities that I like to take a look at, uh, it's interesting to see. You know, there's a lot of companies that are in trouble right now, but I think that are going to be fundamentally very well off in the long run. Disney, one of them, and you just went from 153 down to 80. You're still struggling at about 115. We were as high as about 127 when things looked great. Now, Disney, not going to be a fun 30 days for Disney, as they originally, I believe, have planned sometime to open in July in terms of Disney World in Orlando. We're not far from there. I'm about 45 minutes myself. So, uh, TFNN offices in St. Petersburg, Florida, not far. Uh, but Florida numbers spiking everywhere in terms of the economy of Apple reshutting down some stores. I wonder how that's going to play out, even if Disney is open, the amount of uh, people you're going to face. I mean, Disney gets a lot of people that come 
from the state of Florida itself. And I can tell you, as a person of Florida, I'm a Bush Gardens season pass holder. I'm not going to be going to Bush Gardens. Now, people are. I'm not going to be going there when Florida is getting 5,000 cases a day, folks. Um, and you're going to see some pain in Disney. But so there's the bad, right? You want the good news or the bad news? That's the bad news. Disney's got a lot of problems, all right? Right now, they do. ESPN, sports, baseball just announced they're going to have a 60 game season. Um, but you're dealing with, even as they try and open back up, the Tampa Bay Lightning, for instance, they were on phase one, which only allowed six people on the ice at the same time as they're practicing, right? What happens even with such strict limitations? You have six people testing positive, especially when you're in Florida. Then the numbers are spiking right now. Point being, how do sports come back online for ESPN to be able to benefit in that capacity? So they're dealing with ABC, they're dealing with ESPN, they're dealing with movie productions, they're dealing with being able to show those movies in movie theaters, okay? But guess what they're also dealing with? They're also dealing with Disney Plus, which is probably going to hit like 100 million subscribers in the next X amount of months, whatever that is. I think they were at 55 million the last time they checked in. Now, put this on a three-year weekly for some context of where the jumps in this graph occur, this chart occur. We back it up to April of 2019. So we're going back 14 months. Disney reveals plans with pricing of Disney Plus. I believe that uh, I should know. I have the bundle myself. Um, so I got the Disney, ESPN, and Hulu. I think that's $13.99 maybe. If you just get Disney Plus, that might be $7.99, $6.99, somewhere in that ballpark. Market loves it. They're going to undercut Netflix. They're going to undercut. They're going to they're gonna compete on price on Netflix with the content library they have. They then launch things basically in October of last year. We hit a high of 151 pre-COVID. Excuse me. And uh, what I want to emphasize most is look where we are on Disney, okay? Now, at TFNN, we love to talk technicals. You don't need to be a technical genius to see the amount of time Disney has spent right at around this 110 to 120 level. You back it up, and let's just even go further. Let's see where, let's see, let's see how far it goes, okay? But look at this consolidation we had. So you, you trade like a rocket ship from 2012 to to basically mid 2015, but then you consolidate from basically 2015 till when they announced to the world the details of Disney Plus. Okay, so you had like a, what is that? One, two, three, four, almost a five year consolidation, four to five year consolidation between 110 and 120 for Disney. They launched the streaming service, you, you just accelerate out of there to 150. And we're right back to 115. We're right back on the upper echelon. I mean, Disney is back where it was trading at five years ago, folks. They've come a long way in five years. The economy's come a long way in five years, and it will be back to where it is. And when it does, Disney's going to have parks, they're going to have ESPN, they're going to have Hulu, and they're going to have probably nine figures to the tune of 100 million people on Disney Plus when really prior to April of last year, the market was pricing Disney right where we are right now with such lower expectations. Now, you're going to miss a year or two or something. There's substantial value in the long term in this equity, folks. There is. There's no. There's only one Mickey Mouse. There's only one Donald Duck. Okay. There's only one Marvel. There's only one Star Wars. All of that they own. Content is king. Netflix is going to be around too. Okay. They're not going to cut into them. But when I see the wars going on between content in terms of whether it's Netflix HBO is coming out, right? You got Amazon Prime. I see when families have Disney, it being one of the things that you might actually not cancel. I myself love Netflix. I have never canceled Netflix since I've been a subscriber, but guess what? I'm now signing up for Disney. I'm now thinking of cutting the cord and signing up for all these other services. And if I don't, you don't, you don't need them all the time. But if you have kids, you're probably going to keep the Disney because kids can watch reruns of cartoons, right? They can watch Star Wars. They can watch Marvel. They can watch PJ Masks out there. Uh, some great value, folks, to bring it back. If you told me in, you know, March of last year what we're going to deal with, but if you have a three to five year plus horizon, you have no idea of anything going on. And my goodness, if you ever said no matter what's going on, March of last year, but that by June of 2020, you're going to be approaching 60 to 70 million subscribers already rolled up in Disney Plus. The market would love that, folks. They're dealing with a lot of short term pain that they're going to have a lot of long term growth, though, when this is over. And there is, there is going to be pent up demand. I can tell you living in Florida, OK, people are going to book vacations. I myself, when this is all over and you feel comfortable around crowds and that is going to happen again, OK, 
uh, there's going to be that pent up demand and it's all going to come. I can't wait to go to Disney. I can't wait to go to Busch Gardens, right? I can't wait to go to Universal and all that. But I ain't going now, but I am watching Disney. I've been watching the Star Wars movies, all that good stuff. So I'm in Disney. I'm a bull man. I'm a bull for disclosure completely. But when you look at this, folks, there is a lot of value in the long term for Disney. Even jumping around Uber, they got a lot of, lot of, lot of woes in the short term as well. Now, there are much Shorter company, there's your Uber chart from early 42 down to 13 pre-COVID uh, low. Their CEO comes on and says, hey, listen, we're going to have like 2 to $4 billion in cash, regardless of how bad our, our um, drop is in terms of 80% drop in revenue. You go from 13 up to almost 40. Folks, the acceleration in Uber Eats, the acceleration of everything going on, people working from home, again, Uber, they're going to be around. They're changing the world long term. Very big bull in Uber shares. All right, checking back in on the markets. Right now, we're looking at an S&P up 30 points at 3141. The NASDAQ looking to open in record territory and the Dow above 26,000. Gold contract up $10 at 1775 and the VIX under 30. Stay tuned, folks. When we come back to finish up the program, I'll be back in three minutes. Stay tuned. Back in the day, I joined the Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
Welcome back, folks. Markets in positive territory. Jumping over to the EU right now in terms of Europe, what we had going on. You had all the markets positive there as well. Strong performances with the DAX up 2.6%, FTSE up 1.4%, CAC Curl up 1.75%. And where some of that may be coming from is that you had a Eurozone downturn slowing significantly in June. PMI data measuring activity in both the services and manufacturing sector in the Eurozone came in at 47.5 in June, up from a final reading of 31.9 in May. They were looking for somewhere about 42 and 50 separates contraction to growth, right? So 31.9 in May, 47.5 in June, you get above 50 and you're actually growing right back there. So that's some good news. Talk about not good news for one man in particular, the CEO of Wirecard. And more than that, folks, a lot of people potentially hurt in this sad story in terms of the destruction of value. You have the CEO resigning last week and he is now arrested and uh, basically uh, accused of multi-billion dollar fraud. Pretty remarkable that this can go on in this day and age, that you can just basically say you have $2 billion on your balance sheet in some bank in the Philippines. And guess what, folks? That bank's like, no, nah, no, nah, we don't got that money at all. Um, and the stock's just been cratering, as you may expect. But he has now been arrested on charging of inflated the company's balance sheet, prosecutors in Munich said uh, today. And what else? We talked about it yesterday for Apple. Apple charging higher all-time highs at the open. And I, an iPhone owner myself, should be interesting. For the first time, they're going to allow widgets. Uh, new software, iOS 14, a lot of new features, including widgets. Now, for all you Android Android users out there, you're used to being able to have this capacity where you can uh, put a widget on there of some capacity. For Apple users, usually it's just you just get the apps. You get that little app. Now you're going to have a lot more widgets, whether it's this type of weather, right? You got pictures up there, interactivity and apps. Uh, should be interesting. It will support phones as old as the iPhone SE and the iPhone 6S. So it's going to be able to apply to basically every decent phone that's in the market for Apple. And there you go. Some widgets coming to the iPhone as they up there ante with iOS 14. A lot of software in that Apple, not much of hardware. But Apple, all-time highs. Why not, folks? Stay tuned. We got our man, Larry Pezzavento, coming up live at 9 o'clock, live programming all day at TFN.